Hey guys, I am Jeff Feinberg here with you breaking down week 10 of the National Football League. My DFS suggestions for oddschecker.com slash US. Uh, geez, NFL season just keeps banging along. Uh, Sunday with the Masters should be absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we can make up for some Masters L's. I mean, just likely scenarios um, with some NFL W's. That's how we roll. I mean, I rostered Eric Van Royen, and he's withdrawn. Yeah. Let's hope that doesn't happen with the football picks. Quarterback, Drew Locke, baby, $5,500 on DraftKings, $7,100 on FanDuel. Locke and even Derek Carr on the other uh, side of this game, they rep represent some great salary save options uh, this week at the quarterback position, Locke has 40 or more pass attempts in the last three games. He also has six touchdowns in the last two weeks, seven rushing attempts for nearly 50 yards in his last outing. The Raiders have given up the seven most points to quarterbacks this year. Locke has some cheap stacking options as well, which we will uh, get to. I just noticed I'm wearing my orange crush Bronco. So there it is. I uh, didn't even plan for that. Don't even like that I'm doing it now that I'm, it's all replaying in my head. Deshaun Watson, baby, I'm all over him. Uh, he's my home league quarterback at 6,900 on DraftKings, 8,300 on FanDuel. We've been rostering him a lot since Bill O'Brien got fired, and he has been on an absolute tear. Last five games, over 300 yards passing and four of them, 13 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Watson, Watson always brings us rushing upsides. He has, upside, he has four more attempts in his last five games and 10 in his most recent outings. The Browns have given up the ninth most fantasy points to quarterbacks on the year uh, right before their uh, – well, they were in that – sorry, they were in that really win game versus the Raiders. But we've seen quarterbacks pretty much move the ball up and down the field versus the Browns this year, and I'm on board with that continuing. Running backs, James Robinson, 6,600 on DraftKings, 7,300 on FanDuel. Robinson continues to be an absolute volume machine. This week he gets the Packers, who have given up the second most fantasy points on the year. Back-to-back -back games, over 22 carries, with over uh, carries and targets. We're flirting with 27 uh, combined. The Texans are big dogs, but that doesn't matter um, sorry, the Jags are big dogs, apologies, but that doesn't matter because he doesn't get, doesn't get scripted out at all. That will just provide more opportunities and catches for him, even if they're down big. Um, yeah, the Jags, they know what they're doing. They'll just run their offense like it's 0-0. Down 17 points in the fourth. Robinson all day, like it. And another guy that started the season, not on many radars, but we're going right back to it. Mike Davis, 4,000 on DraftKings, 5,400 on FanDuel. McCaffrey officially ruled out in this one. He hurt his shoulder late in the Chiefs game. I was actually watching that play. It's like a bit of body slam, uh, side slam, I should say. But Mike Davis is pretty much a free square this week. Um, he is at minimum... Sorry, he is projected to, in many places to be the third highest scoring running back this week. We've seen what he does all year when McCaffrey has been out as consistent as anybody, a floor as high as anybody, uh, also gets those catches. Davis can be incredibly effective in the, in the absence of Christian McCaffrey. Moving along to wide receiver, and we're going to double barrel with stacks here from our quarterbacks, starting off with Brandon Cooks. We spoke about Watson already, and the firing of O'Brien has also pretty much reignited Cooks. Cooks has seemed to have found a fountain of youth in many ways uh, since O'Brien has been shown the door. He has four straight games of nine or more targets and has a touchdown in three or four of those games. So his arrow has been trending up big time, as is that Texans offense. Despite the losses, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Coach Cornell knows the situation there and – they're fun, and they're actually, you know they're a pretty good entity for fantasy owners. I've enjoyed it. Jerry Judy, another stacking option, as we've mentioned, Drew Locke this week. Uh, Judy is getting is starting to look like the guy they had hoped when they had drafted him high when they spent that first round equity on him out of Alabama. 
two straight games with 10 or more targets. Again, he gets the Raiders defense, who has struggled to stop just about anyone this year. If you stack the Broncos uh, and a Devontae Adams up top at receiver, that is something that I will be looking to do, and that sort of would be my suggestion. Uh, I like these cheap Broncos, and they'll let you pay up across the board uh, for those tier, tier one type guys. Tight end. Oh, man. The trap door that has been tight end for me this year. Yeah. Now I'm just mad at myself. I overdrafted Hunter Henry, and he does nothing. Darren Waller, $5,900, 7000 on DraftKings. Watched him score a touchdown last week. He's actually the highest price tight end in the slate with George Kettle on IR, but he's still only 5900 on DK and 7000 in FanDuel. The Raiders' offense has looked incredibly efficient, both running, passing, Gruden, um, really getting it done in a nice play calling, keeping defenses off balance, finding opportunities for his play call playmakers. Waller uh, always seems to have plenty of designs, having uh, watched quite a bit of the Raiders last um so far this season, especially last week. His yards haven't matched his targets per se, but you can see that he is a focal point in the offense, in the designs that they are coming out with. Um, six or more targets in his last four games and a touchdown in three or four of those games. So at this point, um, Waller is the guy that I would be buying at tight end, despite being the highest in the slate. Uh, makes sense to me. Austin Hooper, 3,900 on DraftKings, 5,100 on FanDuel. Hooper is coming off injury, but before he was out, he was starting to hit his stride. Four, seven, ten, and six targets before the injury. It looks like Mayfield will, has been removed from the COVID list, so that certainly will help. The Texans giving up a ton of fantasy points, two tight ends this year. Uh, Hooper's projected in many Plays just under 10 points. If he finds the end zone a couple times, he'll crush that projection. Uh, Austin Hooper, 3,900 on DraftKings, 5,100 on FanDuel. Uh, as I just hope to find a way to figure out the trap door, that is the tight end position. Defense, give me Washington, $3,200 on DraftKings, 3,800 on FanDuel. Washington pressures at one of the highest rates in the NFL. As you know, DFS defensive plays, it's all about creating pressures. With the pressures come the turnovers. With the turnovers come the touchdowns. Pretty much pressures create opportunities for those big plays. The issue concern would be the Lions don't throw a ton, but when they do, Washington and that front seven should be able to take full advantage, in my opinion. If they can get some pressure on Stafford and force some turnovers, they'll make very they'll make good on this price point, no problem. And the Bills, 2700 for the Bills, sneaky and a big ass because this is one of the highest projected point totals on the slate. But points sometimes don't matter when it comes to defense, and I would argue in many cases uh, end up being overrated. The only thing that matters, as I've already mentioned, is pressure, turnovers, and possible touchdowns. The Bills turned Russell, o Russell Wilson over four times last week. Kyler Murray will do much the same, holding the ball, trying to make a play. He's fantastic at it. We know that. Uh, but that, with that will come opportunities for that defense. I don't mind the Cardinals defense on the other side uh, for many of the same reasons, if that's where you want to go. But as I'm clearly just broken it down, I would lean the Buffalo Bills. I'm Jeff Feinberg. Like, sub, comment. Tell me which DFS plays you like the most uh, that – you like the most this week. Tell me which ones of mine you're looking to play. You're looking to fade. Let me hear it in the comments below. Like, sub, comment. Thank you for taking it in. I'll be with you again next week doing more golf and NFL content here over at Odds Checker. Hope we get some green screens, friends. May the winners be yours. Leave meeting.